Have you ever heard the term complete protein, but you weren't sure what it meant? Or the phrase essential amino acids and wondered what that meant for your diet and overall health? Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anna. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm a medical doctor. I was trained in Italy and I created this channel to help provide all of you easy and effective nutrition, health and wellness information to help you stay healthy, feeling well for as long as possible. And today I want to help unravel for you the mystery of proteins and how the nutrition of protein works in our diet. We're going to unpack some of this terminology and I will leave you with very useful, practical ways to think about protein and how to incorporate it into your diet in the healthiest way possible. Let's start with a little bit of basic physiology and overall functionality of our body. Proteins are an essential nutrient of our diet. All of us know that. We know that you need to have a certain amount of protein and that can change during different parts of our lifetime. Most of us are familiar with the concept that protein is really important for growth in our body. It's why the age old wisdom to children to drink more milk even exists in the first place because protein is really important for growth. Most of our body is actually made up of proteins. All cells in our body have protein in them and all of the organs and the tissues in our body have protein as an essential component of what make them up. Now, in terms of the functionality, proteins play a role in almost every function in our body. It has to do with our metabolic processes, it has to do with communication in our bodies and signaling things from one organ system to another. So if our cardiovascular system wants to talk to our digestive system, which talks to our brain, somewhere along the way, proteins are going to be involved. Now, the important thing to think about when it comes to protein in our diets is that not all proteins are created equally. So I want to highlight for you here some of the science and basic biochemistry of protein so that you can understand how to weave this into your diet in an extremely useful and practical way. Let's start by defining what a complete protein is. A complete protein is something that provides our body with all nine essential amino acids. Now there are many more than nine amino acids that exist, but the way our metabolism works and the biochemistry in our bodies works is that we can synthesize, another word for create, a lot of the amino acids that our body needs to do all of its functionality, except for nine of them. There are nine that we must get from food from our diet so that our body can then use it to do other metabolic processes put it into a lot of different chemical reactions and ultimately keep us alive. Now I'm not gonna list all of them for you here. It's a bit of a mouthful. There are things like histidine, leucine, lysine, isoleucine, valine. Maybe you've seen some of these in the supplement shelves of your grocery store or health food store. But what you need to understand is that the way nutrition works is that if we have a variety of foods in our diet that allow us to get in all of the nutrients our body needs, like these nine essential amino acids, then we are well equipped to do everything that our body needs to do in terms of its metabolism, the system functions of each of our organs, and some of that growth. So you can think of amino acids as the building blocks of proteins and proteins themselves for the building blocks of almost everything else in your body. Your hair, your skin, your nails, your organs, all of these things have protein in them, as well as things like enzymes, which are these protein molecules that cause chemical reactions to happen. If you found this video useful for you, or if you think it's going to be useful for someone else that you care about, please consider sharing this, spread the awareness, teach other people what you learned today. Your body depends on it. Okay, so that was a lot of science and that was a lot of technical terminology. How about the practical tips? What do you actually need to know about protein in order for you to reap the benefits of it? Well, the truth is you don't really need to keep track of all of these nine essential amino acids because most foods that are protein rich already have all nine of them. That is why they're called a complete protein. They complete the picture of us by giving us all nine of these things. So what are some examples of a complete protein? Well, any kind of meat, fish, dairy source. So this could be something that derives from milk, like yogurt, cheese, as well as eggs. But if you are somebody who is not eating meat or not eating animal products at all, Fear not, there are plenty of plant sources that are also complete proteins. Some of these are grains like quinoa, amaranth, or buckwheat. Also soy is a complete protein. But here's a fantastic fact for you. You can also combine certain foods to reach all nine essential amino acids 
when they're in combination. This is an absolute game changer for anybody who is vegan or vegetarian because some of the common healthy foods that we eat a lot of if we're not eating animal products are going to be things like legumes, beans, lentils, and a lot of whole grains. Now the cool thing that you might not realize is these things end up being eaten together in traditional diets around the world. Think about beans and rice, something that we see in a lot of different cultures. Now, why is that a good combination? It's not just because it's super tasty, but when you combine beans and rice, you are hitting all nine of those essential amino acids. So by eating them together, you're creating a complete protein for yourself. Some other good examples of this are hummus and pita bread. Again, hummus being something that comes from a bean, which are chickpeas or ceci in Italian, one of my favorite words, but also having lentils with most other whole grains. So when you combine these things together in the meal, you are creating for yourself the nutrition that your body needs to do everything it wants to do when it comes to protein. But here's the kicker. And this is where some people really get confused. It's not their fault that they get confused because nutrition is a lot of technical information and there's a lot of detail to understand how to put the whole picture together. But I'm going to give you a little piece of advice that one of my professors in my nutrition program when I got my bachelor's degree gave to us. And it's that you might not remember what you eat, but the body remembers. Now, what do I mean by that? So the key to getting all nine essential amino acids into your diet is not just about having all of them in one meal. If you had rice with your lunch, but then you have beans with your dinner, the body remembers. The body gets all of those nine essential amino acids when you combine them over time. Now, of course, the body is doing its metabolism all of the time. So if you only have beans for seven days straight and then you only have rice for seven days straight, that's going to be a little bit challenging. But as long as you're eating all of the foods that balance each other out in the same time frame, generally speaking, you're going to be okay. And the same goes for meat. There are a lot of people who are not vegan or vegetarian, but they just wanna cut back on their meat consumption. Maybe this is for moral or ethical reasons or also just ecological reasons. So as long as you're consuming a variety of food sources that overall are giving you all of the essential amino acids you need, you're doing great. Your diet is considered complete. So you can piece together all of the essential nutrients that you need to have an overall nutritious and full diet. So whether you're a plant-based eater, a meat eater, or a combination of the two, now you are well equipped with a lot of useful tips and knowledge so that you can get all of the nutritional requirements for your body from your diet. I want you to feel confident and equipped with the knowledge you need to make healthy choices for yourself and to make it easy for yourself to be healthy. Health does not need to be something we are constantly chasing. It should be something we are in balance with and that feels nourishing, truly nourishing to us. That is the point of eating.